Now, Steve Steinman first hit the headlines 27 years ago when he appeared on a television programme, you might remember, called Stars in Their Eyes. He appeared as Meatloaf. That episode of the show was probably the most watched, and now Steve has turned his one-off appearance into a full-blown musical career. Not only does Steve tour the country with his smash hit Meatloaf story show, Anything for Love, he's also a very successful producer, touring other theatre shows up and down the country. Sadly, though, like many other performers and artists, obviously he's had to cancel his shows, including one that was due to come to Scarborough Spa this year, but that hasn't stopped him coming up with a new style TV show during lockdown, which he's put on YouTube. We're very pleased to welcome Steve Steinman to BBC Radio York this afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Well, all right, I can just about see you by the dashboard light there. Um, take <laughs> us back to <laughs> no, that... No more puns, please, no more no, puns. No, all right, that was the last one, I promise. I can't think of any more meatloaf <laughs> lyrics, to be honest. Um, take us back to that appearance on Stars in Your Eyes, what, nearly three decades ago. How long had you been yeah. singing as Meatloaf before you appeared on, on telly? I, I never did. I was. Uh, I used to own a restaurant, and and it was it was just the thing on a Saturday night, and we'd all watch Stars in Their Eyes. I think it was its third, uh, third year, third season when I went on, and it was just the fun thing to watch, and uh, I had no intentions of being a singer. And it just went, I went, ended up getting a, a, an audition. Somebody sent a tape in. I used to sing a few songs in, in my restaurant. We'd have acts on and I'd get up and sing a song. And I, I, I had no intention of going down this road. So I, I've led an incredibly different uh, career path from when I started. Was that telly appearance, was that life-changing, as they say? Well, it, it was for me, because of the uh, the career path I ended up going down, and uh, the economy just dropped a bit, a bit like now, in a sense, uh, in the late nineties, ninety four, early early nineties. Sorry, um, there was a terrible recession, and interest rates were up there in eighteen, nineteen percent, and. And I basically just had to find something to do. The the restaurant business was struggling terribly, and I, I just went out singing. I just went out to make a living, and I ended up making a full career out of it. So life changing for me, definitely. Yeah. And and tell me about how meatloaf is received these days, because I don't know. Is is meatloaf just known by generations like the one I'm in? I was born in 1961. Or does Meatloaf yeah. still have an appeal to a younger audience? Yeah, I think, you know, Bat NFL, the album, that, that particular album, and then obviously Anything for Love, the, 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 the Grammy Award winning song, still still get played. And, and I think, like myself, obviously I've got kids, they've grown up listening to them albums because I've been playing them. So you get that crossover of younger people coming because their parents have been playing it. Um, and luckily for me... The audience, a kind of our age, you know, between between I'd say forty to seventy years old, and it and it works, and they're they're the guys who go to theatre, so we're selling out arenas and concert halls, you know, it's just been an amazing ride, you know. It's good to hear that. I mean, we talked much earlier on the show today to the the boss of York Theatre Royal and he was talking about how difficult things have been for well theatres but you know performers and the arts in in general how have things been for you over the last three or four months when things started to close down well well yeah we had such an amazing tour lined up ticket sales were through the roof it it was going to be without doubt the best year of my 30-year career, basically. We, we were on fire, and I think that went for a lot of people. Everybody was out. They were buying tickets. People wanted shows. We were selling arenas out, and then it's just like having, having your world just ripped apart. I mean, no income whatsoever. Um, I've got 20-odd staff. I've got so many on furlough. But we've been in this industry. We're not even given a point of, look, you're going to be back in September. We're going to sort this out. We're not getting any indication. I think the government said theatres can reopen, but you can't put performances on. Well, it's a bit like saying you can open your hotel, but you can't have people staying in it. So uh, it's been very difficult, and, and I come up with the idea just to keep the band members working 
uh, let's do a TV style show in my office. We filmed it under social distancing and we set the band up and we put that on YouTube and it's absolutely been going down an absolute storm. So fingers crossed, something might even come out of the lockdown. Uh, I mean, we've called this Steve Steiner's office rock down, uh, playing on the words lockdown and it, it's been received so well. Thousands and thousands of comments and views. So uh, who knows? We might be able to take this on the road when it all gets back going. It's nice, isn't it, to think that, well, you've not just done something to keep people employed, to keep the band members working away, but you've actually done something that's gone down well with the viewing public. Yeah. Well, it, it's, I've done it so professionally. People, you know, there's been a lot of acts who have, who have obviously filmed themselves singing in the front rooms and they've been just trying to entertain because that's what entertainers do. They just want to entertain and... Uh, I thought we'd take it that one step further and, and make a real production. Uh, and I've got a fabulous office. It's, it's really large and it's full of full of props and jukeboxes and pinball machines. I keep all my I keep a lot of my nice props that we've used in tours in my office. So the the background and the backdrop to the the, the program it looks like we've put a studio set together, but it's actually me, my working office. And we brought on acts to interview and to sing acts that I know throughout the year. Now, these are people who you don't see on TV. So I wanted to put people on TV who should be on TV who never get the chance. And I've interviewed them. They've got a lot to say. They've got great voices, great personalities, but you will never see them on TV. It's just the way TV works. They keep putting the same people on over and over again. So it was a real... uh, a fresh, it's a, it's a fresh look at entertainment, I think. And it's got that fun vibe, you know, that, that Chris Evans, TFI Friday vibe about it. If people want to see it for themselves, to, to actually yeah. view what you're, you're talking about so wonderfully enthusiastically, what, what do they need to look for? They just go on uh, YouTube and put Steve Steinman TV. Bang, it'll be there. And you can watch the last episode we just did on Friday. We've got a new episode Friday. I've done five shows, so there's four more to come. So Steve Steinman TV, YouTube. Are you hoping, I mean, I assume you're, you're hoping, you don't have every right to hope, that once things normalise and once you can get back to live performance venues that actually, bad though this has been, and desperate though this has been for a lot of people in in the world of performance like yourself, that actually there will be an audience after this that says, hey, do you remember that guy that gave us all the laughs on YouTube? He's actually in town tonight or next week. Let's really go and see him in the flesh. Well, that that that's the that that would be the win-win. If that's what happens, fantastic. You know, um, who knows? I, I, I did it to do something, but it, it's turned into something bigger than I thought it was going to be. And maybe, I mean, that's a bit like my career. To be to be fair, I, I started off something and I didn't realise how big it was going to be. I played to millions of people. I've played at the London Palladium. I've been in South Africa, Sun City. I've been all over the world and. This could be the next thing. This could be a great thing, and it's come out of something that's really bad. Uh, so let's let's hope something does come good from all this, and that that goes for everybody. Let's hope something changes, uh, and we all have a different world. You know. I think we'll all say here, here to that. Steve Steinman, lovely to have you on Radio York this afternoon. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. And Thank the best you for of having me. You. Cheers. Now, best of luck to you and all performers in the future when life does return to something like normality.